Right, everyone, so we are back. This is the following day uh, filming um, from the last episode you saw last Sunday. And in this session, I'm going to begin to teach some lefts and rights, very basic stuff. I'll try and talk through that as we go. And I'm also going to do the beginnings of some memories and some blinds um, up into a little corner where the dog can then hunt the area out. And if I've got time, I'm also going to do some mark retrieves out in the field. Come on, then, Billy, come on. Right, everyone, so we're going to do some lefts and rights now. Come on, Billy. Um, I'm going to use the same sit. I'm going to use the same high-vis dummy um, because this is just about picking a retrieve and I want him to make sure that he can see them. So the first thing is the dog has to be able to face me absolutely straight on. That's really, really important. So I'm going to use this high-vis uh, white dummy. I'm going to throw it out. And the best tip I can give you with using retrieves is always look where you want the retrieve to land before you throw it you'll be much more accurate that way. So I'm gonna chuck it out to the right, like that. Now I wanna make sure that he is straight. I'm gonna do a stop whistle first, and then send him right. Now in a young dog, you want them to learn to turn and then run in a nice straight line. I'm gonna try and work at my normal speed because it does confuse him when I slow everything down a little bit. So back on the same spot, sit him up, Billy sit, throw the retrieve out whilst I'm close to him. Then I can stand a little bit further back, sit. Good, step forward to where he was sat to meet him coming back. Now that's important for later when you're doing multiple retrieves. It stops the dog running past you to get to the retrieve that's behind you. But it also means I can finish, sit where I started. So I'm gonna do the other side now. So I'm gonna throw it out. Okay, now he's moved. So I'm just gonna straighten him up because it's important he starts straight. And I always drop till my hand touches my hip when I push out from my hip. I'll show you what a lot of people will end up doing. Sit, sit. When they push the dog left or right, they do a high stop and they push out here at shoulder height. Well, that's fine at a short range, but at distance, it's when the dog is most likely to start going wrong because the hand is too similar to a back uh, signal. And that's when you can start having problems. So with all my clients, I always teach them to do a high stop, drop my hand to my hip and push out from my hip. We're going to do the right. I don't know if that'll be on camera. I'm going to stand a little bit further back. Touch my hip, push out. Good lad. Good lad. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, yeah. Good. So, again, sit him up. I'm going to put this one out to the side. Grass is a bit longer there, but because it stands out, it's really easy. Sit. Now I actually put my right hand up that time, but pushed with my left hand. I normally use the same hand at the beginning, but he's a bit further on than that, so sit again. So I'm going to do the right side. I always stand in front of the dog when I put the retrieve out, because if they move, it's easier for you to correct them. So I'm going to put that out, make sure he's absolutely straight. Have a little push to the side as well when I do that. Good lad, good lad, well done. Now I'm hoping my audio is going to be better today because I've moved my microphone to on my hat. So I'm hoping I'm not going to get all that horrible rustling sound. Sit. A bit further this time. Good boy, sit. Good. I want him to turn 90 degrees and run in a straight line. And for that to happen, good boy, the retrieve must be visible at this stage straight away. If the dog can't see it when it turns, it can end up anywhere and obviously we want to avoid that so one more on the right side straighten them up we're not allowed to be wonky are we billy good boy good boy so i'm going to do it from the other side now so you can see me from a slightly different angle billy 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 good boy so i'll do it the other way so here sit good boy i'm going to put it out to the left sit Good boy. Back to meet him on the spot. And again, that's more so for later. Good boy. Because I'll explain that. If I put a retrieve to the right and left, often the dog will run straight past you and try and pick the other one. And we don't want that. We're going to put this one out to the right, straighten them up. 
often they try and turn when you're throwing the retrieve. So being in front of them, having the lead on means you can alter it, correct it before you then send, sit. Good boy, a little bit of hump whistle at the end there. Good lad, good lad. Good boy, yeah? good boy. Boy, ah, you quite like that one, don't you? You like that one? He's a good boy. So again, on the other side, sit. Put it out the other way. So if he moves, I can straighten him up. Sit. Good. Come back to the spot. Meet him on the spot. Good boy, well done. I might get him to deliver nicely on the next one. Sit. Sit. Trying as lucky as. No, sit. Still not straight. Good boy. Good. He's still tending to bow a little bit at this stage, but it's because he's a young dog and he hasn't learned to run straight. So as I was saying earlier, the most important thing at the beginning is uh, that the dog is absolutely straight when you start. He loves this retrieve. He's absolutely straight. The dummy is absolutely at 90 degrees. Uh, if it's a bat retrieve, it's 180 degrees. And the dummy must stand out. This is not about hunting an area out. This is literally about the dog reading a command and running in a straight line and picking the retrieve. There's other times when I want the dog to hunt an area out, and you'll see that in the end part of this video where I'm gonna do some retrieves out in the field, simple mark retrieves into the wind. He's gotta run out, mark it, and then probably hunt the area out to pick it. Right, I'm gonna do the beginnings of memories and blinds now. Now I've actually, pre-planted two retrieves up there already. He didn't see me do that. I did it when he was in the car earlier. I'm going to give him a couple of mark retrieves out there. And then the routine, the walk out, the sit, the heel, the turn, the sit, and then the send is going to program and trick him into running out, thinking there's a retrieve there when he hasn't seen me throw one. For this, I'm going to use a tennis ball, I think, because he quite likes this. So here we go. I'm going to do this over quite a short distance because it, because I need to stay on camera for you guys. So I'm gonna put it out, I'm gonna roll it. Straight. Someone asked me earlier what I say there. I say back, it is back command. It means to run away from you. I'll explain that now actually. Well, that was a big leap. Now I'll explain that. It doesn't matter if the dog's by my side like this, going that way or facing me it's back and that's because it means to run away from me. So whether the dog is facing me directly or it's by my side and I'm sending it that way, it's back to turn and run away from me or by my side and run away from me. I'm gonna do one more like that. I'm gonna turn him this time, heel. Good boy. Breaks the routine up, here, here. Break. Good lad. And do a more formal delivery. Left hand lead, right hand retrieve. Good lad. Good lad. Right, I'm going to do one more like that. Back to heel sit. One more like that. The little routine. So I'm going to do a little pirouette. Heel. Good boy. Good boy. Heel. Sit. I don't want to be ahead of the dog. My front and my toes are level with his toes. Now he goes to move before I'm ready. I hopefully you can see me here. Then I can tug through the lead. Break. A little bit of hunt whistle. Even though he's going to pick it, it doesn't matter. It's about him associating hearing that hunt whistle command when he's about to or as he's picking a retrieve. So now I'm going to put this ball in my pocket. <laughs> oh, that's not very good, Billy, is it? I'm going to walk forwards, sit him up, turn into him, walk back the other way, turn around, sit him up. Right. He hasn't seen me throw one. He's a good boy, but what he is used to, <laughs> good boy, what he is used to is running up into that same space and always finding a retrieve. Now the wooden barriers are there to stop him overshooting the mark. It means I can go straight onto the hunt whistle and I'm containing him within that area. A good option for that is the end of a corner of a field. Right, I'm going to give him another scene. Sit. Not getting too greedy. Here, here, good lad. Right. It's all about the routine, and I could slowly increase the distance out that I'm doing this. Good boy, good boy. Sit. 
Oh boy. It's just getting it on camera so you can see. So the ball now is gonna go in my bag, sit, little pause, tug turn into him, trying to get him, he knows this routine. It means there's a retrieve at the end of it. Sit, strike. Now it is right tight up against the barrier, so you might have to work quite hard for this. Now I'm coming closer in case he gives up or goes out the area so I can be on top of him. Now he's going out the area. Yeah, good boy. If I stayed back there and he started to struggle, he's not at the stage where I can stop him and redirect him. So by quietly moving up, that helps. Now, I haven't got another retrieve down there, but I'm going to this time throw it over his head for him to pick. Good boy, good boy. You'll see what I mean in a second. So a little routine, round again, heel, sit, heel, good. They don't do this all the time though, because they catch you throwing the retreat. Right. Good boy. If you get caught doing that though, then the dog will stop running out or they'll run out and uh, start looking back at you. He likes all these retrieves he does and the dog can start to run out and look back at you. So I only do that maybe one or two times at the end when I'm sure the dog's <coughs> running out. Anyway, I'm gonna go down to the field now. We're gonna do hopefully a few little marked retrieves where he's just got a mark, run out and maybe hunt an area. So we're gonna go give that a go now. Right, so we're in a, a field that's sort of second seed rape. So there's about a foot in places of cover. Um, the wind's slightly coming this way. It's not coming straight across the field. It's coming from over there. Uh, I'm going to give him a real simple mark retrieve to start with, and I'm going to send him almost straight away so that he has his mark. If he gets to the area, you'll also hear me do some hump whistle. Whenever I'm ready to start doing anything with the dog, the whistle is the first thing to go in my mouth. Right. Now you saw there, he went to go before I was ready. Good lad, good boy. Now, probably because I then tugged him back, he took his mark off, his eye off the mark, basically. So this time I'm gonna anticipate that he might do that. So I'm gonna be a bit firmer with the lead so that he keeps his mark. Sit. Strike! I'm sending it in whilst it's still in the air. He's just falling quite short at the moment. Good boy, well done. Good lad, good lad, good lad. He's already done quite a lot now, so yeah. So I'll explain that. Sit. So I'm sending him at this stage whilst the dummy's still in the air, which means as he's running out, he's still got that visual mark, and that helps him judge the distance a bit better. Haven't done a lot of this with him yet, only the odd one. Um, once they start marking it well, I'll start to send them later and later and later. So we're going to go again, Billy, aren't we? Right. You must do this into the wind. Otherwise, if the dog falls short of it, they're never going to pick it. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Billy, they must also have a really good retrieve to be doing open retrieves like this. So I'm going to make him wait a little bit longer, but because I'm going to make him wait a bit longer, I'm not going to throw it quite so far this time. Break. Good lad. Good boy. Right, so I might try a little bit further this time. Good lad, good lad. Heel, heel. I might try a little bit further and send him a little bit later, which doubles the difficulty level. Strike! He is good at figuring it out. Now, I don't know if you noticed, as soon as he came out of the area, I stopped the hump whistle. I want him to learn to associate hearing that hump whistle with when he's about to pick it. So for example, by doing it all the time, no matter where he is, he's not gonna necessarily associate that. So as long as he's in the area, then I'll blow the hump whistle. If he comes out of the area, I stop blowing it. If he goes back in the area, I then increase it. So you'll often hear me do the short blasts, and then when he's really on it, I do the hump whistle all the time. Ready, ready? 
Right. See, the problem there is he looked at me, so he lost his mark. So I need to work on him being steadier so that he then doesn't take his eye off the mark. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. Good boy, Billy. Just one more. I'm happy with that. Something we'll start working on. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy. Let's come out a little bit further. Sit. Sit. He loves this. Sit. Straight. So I knew I was about to pick it, so I did my constant hunt whistle. Good lad, good lad, good lad. Tail going all the time, happy dog. Good boy, put that in my bag. Whoop, Billy, come here, sit. Okay, so a quick recap what we've done today. So we started off doing some lefts and rights, nice straight on the angle, making sure the retrieves are very visible. Um, then we've done some memory retrieves where we've gotten used to running to the same area, always finding a retrieve. And then we've slipped in amongst that somewhere. He hasn't seen them go down, but he recognizes the routine, which then gives him the confidence to run out. And then you've just seen me here doing some marked retrieves into the wind. A few mistakes, which is good to see. I just need to get him being a bit more patient because then when I tug him, he looks at me and then he loses his mark. So I need to get him a bit more steady. Um, and then he won't take his eyes off the retrieve. And then I can slowly increase the distance and the amount of time I wait before I send him, which then obviously doubles the difficulty effort. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, put them in the description below and I'll see if I can cover them at some point. Happy training, guys.